everything and you'll see that you're fucking doomed. But hey, don't worry about it. I mean, why? I mean, just enjoy yourself. So what? You're fucked, okay? Hey, this Matt's, yeah. Matt's saying that all the time. He's talking about the the meteors coming and, you know, why, yeah. why quit smoking? Why? Well, here's the thing. Let me, let me tell you, in, in four and a half billion years, the sun is going to run out of nuclear fuel, if fuel. It will start to collapse in on itself. That gravitation, no sense that, fear ball, the inevitable, well, that right? ball will be converted to energy. It'll, it'll make it uh, get a nuclear reaction out of the more heavy and complex elements that it's converted the helium into, which means it'll expand out again become what they call a red giant, and the periphery of that red giant will include the orbit of Earth and will be incinerated in four and a half billion years. What the and as you come forward in time, from four and a half billion years from now, it only gets worse. Because <laughs> we're going to be destroyed 30 times, 40, 50 times over. Before that, it only gets worse. Okay. Well, we're overdue for the big one as, as far as the super volcano in right. Yellowstone with 30,000 years. We're, we're 200 and, uh, 307 years into a 500-year cycle on the Olympic plate shake and loose. It's done 18 times in 20,000 years. You don't think it's not going to do it again. They got that okay. meteor coming. No. And when that shakes loose, it's a plus 0.9. You've got to understand, every point on the Richter scale is 10 times the previous point. It's exponential. It's not geometric, you know. Right. Uh, okay? In other words, a 9 point is 10 times more possible than a, an 8 point. Okay? And we've only seen three of them in history, and, and, and with the Alaska one, we were able to observe it, and, and it was in the modern science era, okay? And when that shakes loose, it's going to shake loose the whole damn Pacific Northwest and Northern California. And I'm not talking about the San Andreas Fault. That's a whole different thing. I'm talking about the Olympic plate where it subducts from uh, the Pacific Ocean and goes under uh, Washington and Oregon, okay? And it just shakes loose. Well, okay? before all that shit happens, and before you miss out on chow, let me, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's almost Oh, you mean out. I can't talk to you anymore? Miss, yeah, oh, I, want to, I don't want you to miss out on chow. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, basically, you know, on, on, on your timeline and everything else, we got up to 97 when you went to work with uh, Tabor. What, what, what time around 97 was that that you went to work with Tabor? Uh, July of 97. July of 97. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. Okay. I took my fall in 95. I told you I pled to the unlawful charity, which right. was indicted in 94, which I quit in 93 because right. I found out they were investigating me yet again. <laughs> right. right. For the 15th time, I called up a guy and he said, well, the GBI's come by and they've gotten all of my records and receipts relating to the Georgia veterans news. Okay, hey, what else is new? It's happened a half a dozen times. They're investigating me yet again. This time it was GBI. This is in September of 93, mm -hmm. and, and I quit, okay? And in January of 94, I was indicted, 25 grand bond set. In April of 95, I was arrested on it. And in uh, August, I pled on, uh, the unlawful charity, and in December I pled on the theft charge out of DeKalb County, mm -hmm. received five years probation, concurrent restitution. Okay, here's the point I'm making. Since that time, with the, and this includes traffic too, okay, since that time I have broken no laws with the exception of marijuana usage mm -hmm. and failure to file income taxes. I have not broken a fucking law until I went on my rampage. So I want to put you at, at ease there. Okay, there's nothing I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm a man of my word. I'm telling okay. you. Okay, yeah. I got no reason to. Hey, man, hey, listen, you can sentence me to death. You won't be able to fucking impose it. Okay, I'm not. No, I agree. One. Okay. Yeah. When listen, did you? That, that, when did your rampage begin? Can I ask you that? I mean. Yeah, but it's hunting. Right. Okay. Is that, when you, is that when you and Tabor had kind of a yeah. disagreement or whatever? Oh, well, we'd been having a disagreement, but yeah, I, I thought he wasn't getting the money. The reason I wasn't, he was saying I was uh, extorting him. And uh, I knew what his game was. And uh, I was not unlawfully threatening him, but he was saying I was. And the last check he gave me, which is $2,100, uh, that I extorted for him. <laughs> Tabor knows me better than any person alive. Tabor knows me much better than anyone. And Tabor scared shitless of me for good reason. Okay, <laughs> okay. Tabor knows me. I don't have to spell it out to, to Tabor. I don't have to threaten him. 
Okay, okay. He knows me better than anybody. All right. Not that he's close to me. He just knows me because I've revealed myself to him over the years. Again, you need someone to talk to. You need someone to trust. So I thought, I'm not his kind of people. I mean, here's the yuppie's credo, okay? Number one is always remember that you can slum around with guys like Gary Hilton, but always remember they're not our kind of people. Number two, number two, never ever be impressed by anything that anyone has done unless they got a whole lot more money than you do. Okay? That means if I go and climb Mount Everest, that means if I'm the super mega stud of studs, don't be impressed by me unless I have a whole lot more money than, than you do, right. than he does. And number three, don't ever let the people have a cut of the pie. <laughs> okay, keep them down where they belong, keep them wage slaves. Taper Paternity was giving me a cut of the pie, but he was giving me half of it. Yeah, so uh, at any rate, the point is, uh, yeah, that's, uh, oh, the, 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 so the last check Taper gave me, he left it, and on the envelope it had ransom written on it. What did he mean by that? He meant that he was being extorted and he was giving it to me under duress. Okay. okay. And then he left me a letter saying I was threatening him and and I was doing this tough guy act. That's what pissed me off. I, I was saying, act. Act. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an act, dude. <laughs> act. No, no. But here's the thing. It, you know, in my mind, if someone gives you money, and regardless of what you said to them, if someone gives you money and they're saying they're doing it under duress for fear and you accept it, in my mind that's prima facie evidence of the extortion. I mean, wouldn't you agree? I mean, regardless if I threaten someone, make an unlawful threat, you know, I would, you know, I, I, I say I have plenty of lawful threats I can use. You know, I fuck them up lately, that Ron McKinney suit me. So. But, uh, but, if, but if someone gives me a check and say, I'm giving the, this to you because I'm afraid of you and because I feel threatened by you and I'm in fear of, of my limb and life of you and I'm giving you the check for that reason and they document it, okay, by writing ransom on the envelope, by putting a letter in it saying that they're being threatened uh, and you take that check and, and cash it, well, that is extortion in my mind. Isn't it? I mean, I can see your point. Yeah. That's, pro that's yeah. prima facie evidence of extortion. Right. Right. If they can document it, have witnesses, uh, the envelope had ransom written on it, like you know, ransom for your life. I guess you know, I'm holding your life, and, and yeah. you know, and if they're saying to me they're giving it to me under duress and because they feel threatened, and I take it, then that's extortion, isn't it? Yeah. Could be construed to be right. 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 Certainly could. Right. And they document it. They document. By the way, person on the jury, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think under the law, too. Right. Uh, actually, actually. Well, <clears throat> what exactly, I mean, I don't want to get into Tabor that much, but I mean... It, you tell Tabor that, that girl that. is, I killed the girl, but you tell him that girl is dead because he's a fucking smart-ass girl. Right. And instead of... And instead of telling me, Gary, the jig's up, you know, I mean, I don't know what the fuck was going through his mind that he didn't know the girl was dead, for all he, and the girl wasn't, she was alive, for all he knew, I had the girl, you know, it was just gone down that the girl was missing and apparently being abducted by me. What the fuck was in his mind trying to lure me that, you think you're going to rescue the girl that way? Well, I, like I'm going to bring the girl there, especially when they're bracing. Yeah, what the fuck was going through his mind? You tell Tabor, if he had just told me, and it, it makes sense, you're, it's intuitive. If he had told me, Gary, they know it's you, and they're looking for you, and if you got that girl, just like you told me, the first thing you said to me is, Gary, if there's any way that that girl's still alive, please, or work to that effect, he said, please tell us. See, you were exploring that possibility right from the get-go. Not Tabor. He's too busy being a yuppie, smart-ass girl, okay? And tried to lay his coy little trap, and, and I told him, well, I couldn't pick it up that night or the next day, but I might be there the next day, okay? Because I didn't know I was to my fucking wish, and the girl was still a fucking wild, man. I still had that. I got to now, I got to go off the, oh, God. And I was just, you know, I'd come unraveled. You, you saw what, how, I went, 
I tell the rest of us, I slept almost 24 hours a day for, for the next well, month. Like Clay was saying, I hate bringing Tabor into it, but just out of curiosity, he just strikes me as kind of a weird, weird fellow. Oh, based yeah. On his yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of acts like you have something over his head. Or yeah. Something. That's I mean, the impression that I got. That or is he just scared of you? Oh, he's afraid of me, and it it just may be that his wife doesn't know he's a lousy flack at that lies about everything, but I doubt that. The last message I left to him, uh, I was telling him, John, you're working on an agenda that's not working for either, either of us. Uh, it's not working for me because I'm not getting paid. It's not working for you because it's not going to happen. And that is, John, I will never unlawfully threaten you, John. I said, now, I can understand there's two reasons why you might think you could goad me in to unlawfully threaten you. One is that if you had done to anyone what you've done to me, they would be so mad and so outraged that they may well utter an unlawful threat. Secondly is the fact that, well, I'm a stud, and the training I received and the fighting I've done is a matter of public record. The training I received is a matter of public record, and the police have been called on me 30 times. The fighting I've done is a matter of public record. But, John, you're forgetting something. In all those instances, I acted lawfully. I keep my actions lawful. Now, as far as blackmailing you goes, he had never broached that subject, but I, I, I wanted to throw this in. I said, as far as blackmailing you goes, well, John, hey, what am I going to do? Tell your wife you're a lousy faggot that lies about everything? Man, I'm sure she's known that for several years. <laughs> I told him, and it's my feeling, you know, Jan is dumb, you know. <laughs> and again, when you love someone, you have this dreamboat of a guy. You, you, I, you've seen paper. Yeah, yeah, he's dreamboat for the average, you know. He's 44, 40, he's born in 64, man, okay? He's in his mid-40s, your average schmuck in his 40s is a sack of fucking shit, man. You know, he's done spread out. Man, Tabor's a stroking dude, man. I mean, he's tall and good-looking, yeah, and he handles himself beautifully. He's so impeccably mannered. Of course, they, they pose, and they're precious, and that's the way they do it. And so I can understand his wife being blinded by that for several years. But again, she's an attorney. She was first in her class. She's not stupid, right. you know. So I feel sure that, that she... Did he ever, like, come on to you or anything of that? Oh, no, not at all. Or not like all, share all. an experience with you? Never. Like, no, you know, no. Talk about no, what I no, did no. Friday night? Or? Until recently in our relationship, that was, I would never, never have broached it at all. But he you could tell... politeness or just out of... Uh, no, because if you're friends with a faggot, if it becomes accepted, an open thing between you that you're, that he's a faggot, then you're hanging around with a faggot. And in my experience, it, if you're hanging around with a faggot that's acknowledged to be a faggot, I, I shouldn't use those words, it's pejorative. Uh, I, I think the world of gay guys, by the way. Gay guys as a group are more handsome, more talented, more smart, more everything than, than straight men. They, they are. Uh, they're beautiful. And, and talented and everything. And good looking too, you know. But one of the ways you tell a guy's a homosexual if it's just too good looking <laughs> and dressed too damn well like Rock Hudson. Okay. No, no. Uh, Taylor, Tabor's always known that for many years that I knew because he, he knows me better than anyone and he understands how sophisticated I am. By sophisticated, I mean a sophisticated person understands what they're seeing and sees almost everything. That's what I mean by sophistication. Okay. In other words, I've been to New York City. Okay. So uh, Tabor knows I'm an extremely sophisticated guy. Mm -hmm. You know, and and the only reason I'm not rich is because I'm crazy. <laughs> well, there's downsides to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't in a sense it sounds weird, but, but even at this point I wouldn't trade it for being the average cognizant schmuck. That's going and plodding along, doing a job, career, a family, going to church, doing all those dumbass, mindless, brain dead fucking things, man. I wouldn't trade it even now to be incognizant of, of, uh, uh, as the average person. It, to be an, a sentient of, of, of the true reality of, of life. And it's all right there in front of us. But people have uh, the capacity to not to deny truths that are as big as the nose on their face. It's called dimming of awareness. It's a human psychological phenomenon that, number one, reduces tension, and number two, facilitates social interaction. It's a psychologically proven phenomenon that can be demonstrated in the laboratory that we dim our awareness of situations. 
it's almost like the guy's got a big wart on his nose, but you don't look at it. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what drives cops mad, because cops understand that everybody's got an asshole. All you got to do is look for it, and it, it can drive them nuts. <laughs> it, it can.